The Easy Web Content Flash Maker add-on can be used as a great feature to add some interactivity and life to your website. It's a great way to spark interest in your audience to present information such as your services, your products, your portfolio. A series of photos can be used to create a slideshow or a photo gallery as a carousel format. So let me show you how you can add the EWC Flash Maker add-on to your website. If you're using the HTML editor, you would find this add-on and any other add-ons under the add-ons and widgets, and you would click on the Flash Maker add-on. And if you're using the site builder, you will find this add-on and others under the content tab, goodies, EWC add-ons and the flash maker can be used and dragged and dropped into a part of it. In this case, let's go ahead and add a nice slideshow into the bottom of our frequently asked questions on this cheese website. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I will go ahead and drag and drop the flash maker into the area I desire to add it to and the FlashMaker widget will automatically launch. Now, since I have no previously created FlashMakers, I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. I will give it a name. And this will launch the Flash Manager. So I'm going to the default size is 550 pixels by 400 pixels wide. I'm not concerned about that because I can fully customize the size. I will click on the select this template and this takes me to the customize design tab. Now there's default images here and uh, I will just use this area to customize the position of my elements in the size and I can later go ahead and populate the flash here and add my images and real content. I can always come back to the customize design as well. So let's go ahead first and optimize the size of our add-on. In this case, I can go between the default and the large, but I want to actually pick a custom size in this case. I want to make it 960 pixels wide and about 400 pixels. And now as you can see, it has been sized to my specification. Let's go ahead and customize it. As you can see, I can actually click on the title element and the sub content and I can move it around and position it to the area that I would like it to be at. So I think this will be my beginning position. Now on the right side, there is a number of different options to fully optimize my slideshow. I can start with the animation. Under the manage animation, I can decide if I want to loop or not loop the animation. In this case, I want it to loop, meaning that at the very end, it's going to go back to the first slide. I can modify the delay. Right now, it's set at 5.8 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and make it about 4.95 seconds transition between each slide. And I can actually select the different options as far as the way the transitions will take place. Right now, it's a standard fade. I can choose a number of different options. In this case, I'm going to do a fly top. And as you can see, it is going to modify. So let's do a, another option. Let's do an iris square. And when the transition occurs, this will give it another option. So I like to just go ahead and stick with a horizontal blind. That's an option that I'm going to choose. I can modify the easing, the speed at which the transition takes place, change the font color if I need to. But I'm going to stick with the white. Decide on a drop shadow on the text. In this case, I'm going to have a, a slight drop shadow. Modify the description, which is this element here. And I can choose on the font size the size of the font, the font style, and if there's going to be a text effect such as a drop shadow 
or a glow. So I will choose none in this case to keep a crisp text. And I will choose a bright white color. And I can decide if I want to have buttons displayed on the corner of the page. In this case I have a yes. I can decide if it's going to be text or a button style. And I can decide on the button color. So let's go ahead and populate our flash and we can always come back and further customize this design. By the way, I can actually go ahead and zoom out of this so I can see the entire area if it does not fit in, in this uh, pop. So we'll click on the populate flash. And here we can go ahead and start adding clips. These are individual slide transition that, that we're going to uh, transition between. I click on add new clip. So here's my title, Beauty of Cheese. I will add a description. I can decide if I want to make it a link. In this case, I will not have it. I will not include a link. Let's go ahead and browse for our image. So I have uh, got a few images prepared here. I'm going to select the first image and include it. And now I'm going to submit it so I can upload it to my add-on. And as you can see, my first clip has been added. Let's go ahead and add the next one. Add another title. And a description. And so I will basically go ahead and up upload another image. and I will also submit that. And there's my second image added and I will basically follow this process for all the clips that I need to add. And so I've added a total of uh, four clips here and uh, I can now go ahead and take a look and see what it looks like. So if we go to the customized design, we can now see our content actually populated and displaying into this slideshow. I can zoom out a little bit. And there we are. So I like to change the header uh, font a little bit and make it look a bit nicer. It's not as obvious versus my description. So I'm going to click on that. If I go down to the manage title style, the font is Arial. I'm going to go ahead and switch to an Arial black. I like that better and I will change to a mild yellowish color since we're dealing with a cheese related site here and let's take the drop shadow off maybe it would look good with the drop shadow against the background and there is our smaller font for the description and we're going to go ahead and change that font to maybe a book antica or maybe we'll try a garamond that looks a little better okay and possibly a slight text effect. Let's see if we affect a blur. We can do a bevel. In this case, we're just going to stick to a mild drop, sh uh, drop shadow. So that's it. Uh, I think this is looking pretty good here and we're ready to go ahead. So our last step is basically to click on the publish flash. It reminds me if I want to save my changes. Absolutely, I do want to save my changes. And so here we are. I have a URL that I can actually use to share with others if I need to post it on another website. In this case, I want to just insert this directly into my page, so I'm going to click on the insert slash update to page. And so there we are. The Flash Maker has been inserted to the page. So let's go ahead and take a quick peek and see how it looks on our site. And there we are. We scroll down. And it is present at the bottom of our FAQ page. It looks great. It's fitting the page because uh, we had selected the proper size. In this case, 960 pixels. I can even use the buttons, the next and the previous to switch between. And now we've added some interactivity and some motion, which really grabs the user attention on this website. And I think it looks great. You can also take advantage of the FlashMaker add-on and of course use it across your site, create multiple FlashMakers and additional add-ons to better present your site to your users. Thank you.